messages. Joining me now is Philip Toll, our International Affairs Editor. Philip, you're going to be with us, obviously, throughout the afternoon as we cover this uh, summit. Some of the world's major powers are due to speak, as I just listed, um, Israel as well, the US, Turkey, China and Russia. In short, what are they all expected to say? Well, first of all, this, as you were saying, is uh, a UN General Assembly like no other. It's the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. So it should be a very special gathering this time around. But if you actually go to the UN headquarters in First Avenue in New York, you will see it is virtually empty. That's because everyone is sending recorded messages, which are then going to be broadcast uh, over the Internet. Uh, no world leaders are going to turn up. It was even thought that Donald Trump himself may turn up to uh, take part in this meeting. But uh, now he's uh, got a recorded message that's going to be broadcast. He'll be second who will be talking. Now, the leaders are going to appear uh, in an order which has been taken as uh, out of a hat, if you like. There's no formal order apart from Brazil, which traditionally kicks off uh, the speeches followed by the United States. After that, it's a, a free for all. You just take uh, the luck of the draw and that's where your position is. And it, at the beginning, as you were saying, there are many of the larger nations which will be speaking uh, to, to kick off. Brazil, first of all, the United States, Turkey, China, uh, there's also the Russian Federation uh, and also France in the first batch of messages that are going to be broadcast. So if you want to watch it and you want to see what is really going on at the United Nations, then I think you should be watching at the beginning. That's in about an hour's time. So what are they going to be talking about? Well, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, Bolsonaro of Brazil will obviously be defending uh, the criticism uh, about uh, deforestation of the Amazon and also his treatment of uh, the coronavirus outbreak and his denial about the uh, seriousness of it, even though he has had the virus himself. Uh, as for the United States and Donald Trump, well, I don't think any uh, uh, sign that he is going to uh, not go for uh, attacking China uh, and its handling of uh, the coronavirus, which will be, I think, the overall uh, subject of discussion this time round. It certainly upset the apple cart as far as the United Nations is concerned. That's why it's empty today uh, because of the threat of the spread of coronavirus. It's going to be the number one subject, I think, of world leaders. So who'll be criticising China over trade deals, over uh, blaming it for the spread of uh, the coronavirus? I think also talking about his decision to reimpose sanctions on Iran. Um, basically, I think to a, a domestic audience in the United States, because we're very close now to the elections in November, Donald Trump uh, trying hard to increase uh, his uh, uh, popularity ratings, which are trailing behind Joe Biden. So a very nationalistic uh, approach, I think, that we can see probably from Donald Trump. The question is, will he name Joe Biden in his speech or not? That is something that we don't know for the moment. Now, of course, the other important fact, as you pointed out, they're all sending in these video messages, but there is an important element to this um, event now because of the fact that there is nobody there. Yes, that is true. If you look at the way it's laid out, normally each delegation has a right to have six people in the room. This time around, because of the coronavirus, it's only one person in the room. So those five others are absent. Why is that important? Because in the past, when uh, these kind of UN General Assemblies were uh, held, the whole building was bustling with diplomats uh, talking behind the scenes, trying to work out deals also behind the scenes. They're not there this time round. So we have the speeches of the different world leaders, but then there is no behind the scenes diplomacy and there's no right of reply either from one world leader to another because all of those speeches have already been recorded. So it's uh, an enchaînement, as they say in French, uh, a, a continued uh, a series of speeches that are going to be broadcast throughout the day, but there'll be no behind-the-scenes diplomacy, no right of reply. So it could be a fairly dry exercise, if you like, because each one is going to stick to their positions and no one will have to answer for anything. Philip, uh, thank you.